Seven o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. All members are present with the exception of Mr. McCoy, uh, who can't be at this evening's meeting. He's recovering from surgery and uh, is doing well and fully expects to be here at our August meeting. Uh, we'll start with the transmitting of Treasury Warrants 52, 52A, 53, 53A, 54, 1, 1A, 2, and 2A. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. We have no minutes to approve this evening, so we'll move directly to our 7 o'clock uh, agenda appointment item with uh, Michael Scannell, Health, Safety, Environmental Su uh, Supervisor, Lubrizol Advanced Materials, and it's regarding a request of new 207 Lowell Street Holland development to increase above ground storage of combustible products at Lubrizol Advanced Materials at 207 Lowell Street. Mr. Scannell? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good morning, have a seat at the front table. Did I pronounce your name right, sir? It's pronounced Scannell. Scannell. Okay, thank you. Actually, sir, we're just going to ask for tonight, if all possible, for an, an extension until next month. We have a few questions from our neighbors and from the fire chief. We'd like to answer first before we come here and make sure we are properly prepared. Okay, yeah, that was my understanding uh, yes. from word from the manager late today. Uh, is there anybody in the audience? We thank you for coming tonight to field any questions uh, that folks might have. Are there any questions uh, that folks have now that they haven't yet been able to address with the applicant? And hearing and seeing none, then we'll entertain a motion to uh, continue the hearing uh, to our August meeting, which is on 17th. August 17th. Mr. Chairman, before you accept that motion, should we just put in the record that we did receive um, a, an email late this afternoon at 4.42 p.m. from Arthur P. Krieger of Anderson and Krieger who wrote on behalf of Textron Systems and AFCO Corporation um, e expressing uh, their wish that the board would uh, continue the hearing. It's a rather lengthy letter, letter but it can be placed in the uh, in the record. That's this right here. Yeah, so that's one of the uh, our visitors, I should say, our, our actual neighbors we're going to be chatting with to answer their questions. Okay. Very well. Why don't we take the motion that if there's anything else the board needs to address? I'll make a motion that we suspend this meeting until August 17th for Lubrizol Advanced Materials Company hearing. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion to continue the hearing till August 17th. Uh, any other questions? Do, do we have the green Comments? cards, Mr. Chair? Good question. Uh, if we have the green cards that you sent out, reflecting that you sent out uh, notice to the abutters, we'll take them. Green card has returned but one, and uh, the post office has tried multiple times, and there's nobody that uh, no one's responding. So here are all the cards that did respond. This one I didn't get the green card back, but the um, post office confirms that it was delivered, and this is the one that has not shown up. I do have the paperwork proving I sent it. Uh, three attempts have been made by the post office. Okay. Do you want to keep the one that's missing? You want me to keep this in case it shows up between now and next month? No, you can you can bring it to us otherwise. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. And before we take the vote, um, if you could just whatever follow up the fire department has and or input from the abutters if that's articulated to the town if we could have that for sure. the next meeting. Please. Sure. Uh motion been made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Scano. We'll see you in August. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> As our next appointment is a um, public hearing pub uh, publicized for 710, why don't we move to some communications and then we'll return to our agenda items. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the board has received a letter from uh, Mark Trefiro, the treasurer of the Shashin Valley Regional Vocational Technicals school district uh, providing the board with the amended fiscal year 2010 Shashin uh, district budget that was approved unanimously by the district school committee. The total of the budget is $23,129,435. The town's assessment uh, of the apportionment for the budget for fiscal year 2010 is $3,204,587. Uh, this was a change that was made as a result of the um, uh, changes in local aid figures. 
I would note uh, for the board that the town um, appropriated $3,260,000, so this does not uh, pose a problem, and I would um, suspect that uh, come next uh, May at the town meeting, we will have available to us some $55,000 for transfer purposes. So we're still well within budget with regard to the uh, Shoshin Tech assessment. Uh, the board has its standard letter that it uh, receives uh, each year on the MWRA wholesale water and sewer assessment rates for fiscal year 2010. Uh, the final assessments, um, combined assessments, increased 3.8 percent over fiscal year 09. It includes a 0 0.6 percent decrease on water assessments and a 6 percent increase on sewer assessments. As it pertains to the town of Wilmington, we don't receive a water assessment uh, this year, not until fiscal year 11. Uh, in terms of the uh, sewer assess assessment, we did go up uh, this year from last year's number by 12.3%, uh, which is unusual uh, for the town since it has been um, experiencing uh, either level funding or actual decrease if you look at the budgets over the past few years. Uh, we had uh, anticipated about a million eight hundred thousand. It came in at a million nine eighty five, um, and I do not expect that that's going to be a problem for us. The reason why uh, the increase is the MWRA lost about twenty million dollars from the state for debt assistance, so the uh, revenue is uh, being up, made up by rate payers. In addition, in terms of the town. Uh, the sewer flows are trending up while water use is down, and it indicates that the interceptor that the town intends to repair is probably allowing more I&I infiltration and inflow in than it had previously. Um, and uh, therefore, because of that continued structural uh, degrad degradation of the pipe, um, and uh, coupled with the year and a half of rather wet weather, we've had this kind of a problem. Um, the positive news is we don't anticipate any increase in sewer rates, and again, that's primarily because we had the offset this past year in fiscal year uh, 09. We had capital expenditures and sewer uh, exceeding uh, $200,000, and so this increase in the assessment is actually less than what our capital uh, budget was that was handled by the uh, by the uh, opera operations accounts and therefore we uh, we pretty much uh, break even so there's no expectation of an increase in the sewer or water rates for that matter you want me to continue actually it's uh, it's past 710 so we can return to our appointment items uh and our 710 agenda item is with thomas Liquors Inc. It's regarding a request to transfer stock of the all alcohol package store license from Baransom and Sarasom to Thanton and Keeleton for property located at 35 Lowell Street. Councilor? Good evening, and uh, Councilor, before you um, I advise the board on uh, the background of why you're here. I just wanted to make sure that it's okay with you and your client if I uh, hear this matter. I, your client, I'm sure, remembers I represented the, the prior owner who sold to the current owner, so I, I had abstained and recused myself from that some there, time ago. There is no, we have no objection to you being involved in this process at all. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, Perhaps you can give us an outline of what you're looking for. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Attorney Thomas Fothergill. I'm representing Colonial Park Liquors Incorporated. Uh, Mr. Tan Tan is the president with me this evening. Um, essentially what's happening is this, the company has four shareholders. It's actually two couples, it's a husband and wife and a husband and wife. Mr. Tan and his wife Keeley own half the shares and uh, Boren Som and Sarah Som own the other half of the shares. Um, Mr. Tan and his wife are going to be buying out um, uh, the Psalms so that they will be the sole shareholders. There'll be two shareholders instead of four. Uh, additionally, there'll be a change in the directors. All four shareholders 
we're members of the Board of Directors. Uh, that will change so that now the Board of Directors will only be uh, Mr. Ton and his wife, Keeley. Uh, Keeley Ton will be listed as the manager for purposes of the license. And, uh, as, and as I indicated, the shareholders, um, as opposed to four shareholders, will now be down to two shareholders. Um, if you'd like, I could get into the terms of the uh, transaction, or I'm not sure what the pleasure of the board is in terms of the numbers. <clears throat> Maybe we can <clears throat> see what the board has for questions or comments, and if any questions or comments are forthcoming from the audience. General? Uh, I have no, no I can't. No. I, I, probably the, uh, uh, I am assuming, and you, perhaps you can confirm for me, that operationally you don't anticipate any changes, uh, that this is a be, financial no. arrangement. That's correct. There'll be the, the, Nothing will change from a standpoint of, of, of operationally. Mr. Tan will remain as the president of the corporation. The corporation is still intact. It will still be the owner. Of the of the business, so that they, we don't anticipate there'll be any changes whatsoever, other than again just the change of the shareholders and also the directors. Do we have anything from department heads of the administration? No uh, objection, Mr. Chairman. Do we have any questions or comments from the audience? Uh, questions, comments, or a motion from the board? Just uh, is this a transaction that has taken place or is pending taking place? Based on what happens, it's taking place with the approval of this board and also the ABCC. Okay. So it, 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 the, the, we're, it's contingent upon the approval of this board before the transaction will will be uh, ultimately finalized. But the terms of the agreement, as we see here, are agreed upon by the two parties. That's okay. That's correct. Um, yeah, that's. I have no other questions that I can think of. I guess I would move uh, that we approve the. Transfer of, I'll try to get the names right, forgive me, please, um, of the Colonial Park liquors from the four shareholders, Tan Tan, uh, Boran Som, Keeley Tom, and Sa Sarah Som, to the aforementioned two shareholders, uh, Tan Tan and Keeley Tom, as prescribed. I'll second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. <clears throat> yes, please. Um, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> um, once again, we have a receipt with regard to the MTBE products liability litigation. Uh, the town is in receipt of settlement checks for the uh, net proceeds in accordance with the board's approval of the settlements made with Global Companies LLC and Gulf Oil LP. Um, the total net proceed made payable to the town of Wilmington from the Global Companies was $12,337.22. And the total made payable to the town of Wilmington, again for deposit to the water and sewer department from Gulf Oil, was $11,611.91. Uh, the amount is in addition to the previously uh, reported payments of $859,612. So we're uh, now talking about a total of in excess of $883,000 that has come into the town as a result of the settlement agreement. <clears throat> uh, the board at the um, their meeting of June 22nd uh, received correspondence from the executive director of Mass Recycle requesting the board's consideration <clears throat> in supporting legislation to include non-carbonated beverage containers in a redemption category for recycling similar to uh, that of carbonated soft drinks. Uh, at that time, the board requested that a copy of the specific legislation be provided in order that they may consider uh, any action at this meeting on July 13th. Um, we provided that to you um, back on July 1st, and of course another copy was provided to the board of the legislation. Uh, they were looking specifically 
uh, for a resolution to be signed in support of updating the Massachusetts bottle bill. I know the board had some, at least some concerns that they wanted to, to take a look at the legislation. Also provided for you is the uh, copy of the actual correspondence that originally came to you. Questions or comments from the board? Uh, yeah, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I appreciate you, uh, Mr. Carr, uh, assembling this information. Uh, I, sus I think it was probably I that pers uh, requested it uh, at the last meeting. Frankly, I was looking for, after I read the letter from Mass Recycle, um, I was looking for, and I guess I still am, and, and I didn't get, uh, and I haven't been able to uncover through doing some of my own research, a reason why we would not want to support this resolution. Um, in other words, on its face, it seems, uh, it seems reasonable. It seems like a good idea, uh, and, and I'll specifically state, or I'll, I highlighted some phrases here. It says that the, uh, the Massachusetts bottle bill, we, uh, through the Mass uh, bottle bill, we recycle nearly 80% of containers of deposit containers, but only 20% of non-deposit containers. Uh, additionally, it states, the original bottle bill does not take into account those beverages such as bottled water, sports drinks, and teas. Those are some of the things that have come into our uh, economy since the original bottle bill was put in place. And it talks uh, further about the addition of bottled water, sports drinks, and teas to the bottle bill will decrease the total volume of municipal solid waste that is needed to be collected, thus saving disposal fees and landfill space. Again, this seems on its face to be a no-brainer and something that we as a board ought to be supporting. And I was looking for any indication from, uh, I guess, the other side if, if such a thing exists. I couldn't uncover any. And as such, I was hopeful that maybe we could discuss it a little bit as a board. And, and uh, if, if, the, if it seemed logical, maybe we make a motion to, uh, to have us sign it. Or it, it asks for your signature, Mr. Chairman. Um, but uh, I don't know if it, if it requires a motion or if it's just a discussion point or what. It's, uh as I sit here and listen to your comments, uh, it's interesting. I, I had the same gut reaction as you did at, at the last meeting, although um, I was curious when I saw the legislation that uh, none of our legislative delegates had uh, signed on uh, to the bill, and I, I wondered, is there still something that, that I'm not getting? So, <clears throat> yeah. I, I, to me, I agree with the message, but I'm wondering if there's something, if there's an impact on small business that we're not seeing or learning or that's not being publicized, uh, and that coupled with, um, you know, the absence of our, you know, our legislative delegation, uh, I, my mindset was let's leave it to our legislators to make sure they get all the information. They might support this, uh, oppose it. I don't know. I certainly don't want to leave an impression that, that you know, I know where they're coming from just because they're not uh, signed on to the bill. But yeah. I, I kind of want to, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking that uh, they will gather all that information. It's one of the things that I certainly am willing to let our legislative delegation handle. Um, I have certainly no objection if the board wants to, uh, uh, you know, the majority of the board wants to contact our legislative delegation and say that, you know, we're not, we don't see any reason to oppose it but certainly trust that you'll bring any, uh, you know, opposition to our attention. Maybe that's the way to handle it. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, the, um, the way I understand it, I mean, I have no problem supporting it, but as far as, um, like, the, um, the plastics on water, iced tea, um, that are non-refundable non, um, now, um, is that going to be putting, like, the five cents per container um, um, hold back when, when they purchase this? Is that going to be, you know, um, basically what, what this is going to do to um, those, those items that, are, that have been named? That was my understanding. Yeah. Same with you, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Just That's, so everybody really understands. Yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have no, you know, um, problem supporting it. And I mean, you still have uh, plastics, and plastics is the same as something that's being, uh, you know, five cents, but recycled. So, I mean, um, to me, it makes sense. But like you say, I think we ought to hear from, you know, further up to really see if there's any drawbacks that we're missing. What I'll do, if, and if you guys, if you gentlemen want to do the same, I certainly invite you to do that. But I, I will tell you that I will make contact uh, with our 
uh, state legislators and let them know that, um, that this is something we've had conversation about and see if we can get their, their take on it. There's no deadline here uh, that Mass Recycle is asking for us to assign this in, in time of. So um, I think there's some flexibility. So I think it can probably wait till our next meeting again. Um, and I will endeavor to get some opinion from our state representative um, between now um, th That'd be fine to do, although if um, uh, nobody else, I don't know if you have any thoughts down this end, but my, if, if you want, why don't we just contact the legislative delegation as a board saying that we support, uh, you know, that the uh, purpose for the legislation, if there's any uh, basis, uh, you know, for opposition, please let us know. You know. Oh, right. Just, okay. You know what I mean. That I way, do. we don't have to That's hold it over till till August. We'll just let our legislative delegation know that, from what we can glean, we support it. But uh, certainly, let us know if there's more information out there. So, yeah, that's sufficient to me. It's true. In, in the letter from Jessica Wolznak from Mass Recycle, she even mentions um, there's 50 co-sponsors on the bill, and there's only 19 listed on the front page. So they may already be on board. That's anyway. that's true. Yeah. All right, so uh, it, as long as it's a consensus of the board, we'll ask the manager to send a letter to our legislative delegation uh, indicating that the board supports the, uh, uh, the purposes set forth in uh, the resolution to please contact us if, if, um, you know, if they have any information that would uh, lead us to oppose the initiative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am requesting the approval of the Board of Selectmen to relocate the Office of Veterans Services from their space at the Town Hall to the West Schoolhouse located at 141 Shawshank Avenue. As you know, the current space at Town Hall is extremely small and does not afford, uh, in my judgment, adequate privacy for veterans and their families. Uh, the space that is available at the West Schoolhouse will better accommodate the Department's important mission of service to Wilmington residents as well as meet the myriad of administrative responsibilities vested in that office. Further, the housing of a town department at this location is consistent with the type of use for the West Schoolhouse envisioned by town officials and the Historical Commission at the time that extensive renovations were made to that property. Uh, subject to the approval of the board, it is my intention to effectuate the move prior to the end of the summer. Uh, we will arrive at a more specific targeted moving date in the next seven to ten days, assuming the board is in favor, and then we would begin a public notification process. So I would be looking for the, um, the board's um, support of this decision. I think it ought to be made by the, by the Board of Selectmen. They were involved in the initial discussions of the use of the West schoolhouses, I'm sure many of you recall. Um, and it's, it's my judgment that this is really an issue of better service for the residents and their families. It's an issue of, of privacy. Um, we've been looking to see if we can uh, better accommodate uh, those people who seek the uh, services of the Veterans Office. And at the same time, we've been uh, attempting to find a use for the West Schoolhouse uh, consistent with uh, what we envisioned initially, uh, which was to, to put this renovated building to a practical use for the benefit of the town. Uh, because of the limited parking and the, um, the remote location, it, it limits the kinds of activities that could go on there. We think the way the, uh, the veteran services operation runs, although it is certainly dependent upon offices here at Town Hall, it could run uh, at that independent location and I think provide enhanced um, services to uh, veterans and their families. And, we, you know, we only have virtually a cubbyhole of an office space here at Town Hall, as the, the board is familiar, barely enough room to fit files. And um, if there's one or two people that need to come in and see the veterans uh, director, uh, it, it really becomes cramped. and. Um, you also have people that are waiting out in a uh, in a lobby that I don't think uh, is uh, necessarily a, a good thing in terms of the protection of people's privacy. So I would hope that the board would consider this as an alternative uh, that would uh, not only solve a problem uh, with space issues, 
but would also uh, make what I think is very good use of uh, the building that we renovated. Uh, if we move forward with this, you indicate in your memo that there would be a public notification process. So I, I'm to assume that there'd be no interruption of services, first of all. And then secondly, what kind of notification process would that involve? Uh, the notification, we would, we would have something uh, that would go into town topics. The veterans uh, director and I have discussed this, and he would, uh, you know, certainly notify by letter all of his current clients. We would put something in the uh, newspaper. And we would also make postings at uh, town hall, so people would would recognize that the the move was was going to be uh, happening. Th that said, there are going to be folks that are still going to show up at town hall, and so one of the things we've talked about is we'll have a, a standard card with a map that literally tells people, you know, that they go out the driveway straight across Harden Street, you know, take a left and then and take a right on to Shawshin and uh, follow the Yellow Brook Road right to the West Schoolhouse. So we can, we'll be very uh, user friendly as far as, uh, as far as that's concerned. Questions or comments from can the I board? Just say, uh, I'm going to recuse myself obviously of any discussion on this and then if there's any vote or anything. Okay. Yeah, and let me make it clear, my discussions with um, Mr. Smaglia was in his role as Veterans uh, Services director and he, he did not receive this memorandum any sooner than anybody else but obviously we had discussions about space we've been having discussions about space issue just as I would with any other uh, department okay I have no problem in fact um, yeah, if the board wishes I you know if it needs a motion I'll put the motion forward though to uh, uh, that we give the West uh, school to the uh, Veterans Administration for their office and uh, uh, meeting and, and uh, um, um, to the public. Okay, do we have a second? Sure. Second. second. Uh, anything further? Uh, <clears throat> my take on it is uh, I find the the issue of privacy uh, compelling. So I think that makes sense. I'm sorry. I do have something further. What's happening at the West now? Is it just a completely unused facility right now? Yeah, the only thing going on is occasionally will be a meeting there of the Historical Commission, um, and there is... Uh, the Wilmington High School Alumni Association um, has a some files there and a computer there, and that's something I think we can still we can still work out with them. Great. And I'm sure it's um, the handicap. This it's handicap accessible, correct? Yes, it is. So, yeah, yes. and I think it's definitely. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, definitely, uh, I think it's you know a great great win situation for everybody, including the community. It's a great purpose for it. I think it's overdue. Okay, anything further then? All in favor? That's unanimous with one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the board had heard from the MAPC and Carol Hamilton some time ago about uh, the multi hazard uh, mitigation plan. And that plan was submitted by the town and reviewed, and I'm just report, reporting to the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency for Region 1 uh, has evaluated the plan for compliance, and the plan satisfactorily meets all of the mandatory requirements set forth by all of the regulations. And so we have a letter to that effect um, authored by Paul Ford, the Acting Regional Administrator for FEMA, uh, congratulating the town on this particular achievement and it, it essentially it now includes both Burlington and Wilmington and amends the initial approval letter um, which included the towns of Ashland, Holliston, Linfield and Marlboro and now extends to uh, these six participating jurisdictions of which we are one along with Burlington and the others. Uh, it's also likely to um, issue a an amended resolution uh, once they review the plan <coughs> that has been recently submitted uh, by the town of Bolton. What this means is that uh, with plan approval, all of the communities, or at least the six that I've mentioned at this point, are now eligible to apply for mitigation grants that are administered uh, by FEMA. You still have to go through that process. Uh, this is something new, and unless we had uh, submitted this uh, plan, we would not be available for any of the, uh, the FEMA disaster relief uh, money. So this is a positive uh, result of an effort made by the town and supported by the board. 
I know that uh, we've had folks in on this, and I've probably been told this, and I just don't remember. Um, it seems like a relatively uh, small number of towns. You would think there'd be more. Is it? I, I what, think there what are. Am I missing? That I think there are other districts aside from this, but um, this is sort of a, a, a new um, new regulations that uh, came through, and I believe MAPC is. Um, this is just the communities in the MAPC uh, district at this point. Right, but even given that number, you would have that, thought that I would have thought that there were more. So I guess, yeah. I guess that's a, a compliment to uh, you know the administrative people who've put it together. It's it's certainly not a knock, but uh, I would imagine more towns would be getting on board. So that, may I ask a question about this? It, it may have come across you before my presence on the board. Is this? When we talk about hazard mitigation, is that like hurricane, tornado, things of that ilk that if the town of Wilmington were in need of FEMA assistance, we're now on the team yes, and can yes. and can go at, go after such assistance assistance? Uh, it, yes, we would get um, we would officially receive and I, and I believe these other communities are going to continue to receive it too. I'm sure there's going to be a period of time in, in which they will allow folks to to apply. Um, uh, here to four, we've been, you know, as you know, we just recently received money um, for those for the uh, ice storm. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> uh, just a brief memorandum that I provided to you, a copy of, from um, Tina Stewart, the library director, just noting uh, that the, there is a long-range planning library survey going on as we speak. Um, designed to get community feedback for the development of their five-year long-range plan uh, with the intent to make sure that library services meet community needs and interest. Uh, we encourage folks to take advantage of the uh, survey. All responses are confidential. All opinions uh, matter, including those who may not be frequent users um, of the library. The survey itself is available on the library's website which is www.wilmlibrary.org. It's also available at the library, at the town hall, and the uh, Bazell Senior Center. The board also has um, a Massachusetts Municipal Association legislative alert regarding changes to local cable licensing regulations. This is something that had been um, submitted in the past, and uh, the MMA had opposed it. Um, where this is not as um, topical for us as it was over the last couple of years when certainly um, we opposed it, but um, I don't see any reason why we would not continue um, to oppose this legislation, which sets a very um, a fast timeline in terms of approving local cable licensing. And um, it is something that uh, uh, Verizon and other cable companies have been pushing. Um, and we believe, as does the MMA, that it really harms the competition in the, in the marketplace. Uh, they look to really expedite uh, the hearing process. And it effectively, uh, effectively undermines uh, the town's ability to negotiate. So. Uh, um, I would uh, recommend uh, that the board authorize that a letter be sent uh, in opposition, as we have in the past. So questions, comments? No, I don't. We have to move. To the <coughs> I would agree that, that that that's something we should do. <coughs> I, I would I would ask for a motion to authorize me to send such a. A letter. I don't believe we'll be able to attend the hearing, but we can certainly go on record as a board. Okay. Obviously, we could uh, get a copy to our delegation. So, so we yes, have a motion I, that? I would move that the uh, the board authorize um, Mr. Kyra to uh, send a letter uh, opposing this legislation. Second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous. We had a letter from uh, Dan Stewart, who many of you recognize as the former fire chief, and he wrote, on behalf of the many swimmers who competitively train at Silver Lake, I would like to thank uh, you and the town of Wilmington for your proactive decision to deal with the overgrowth of weeds in the lake 
Uh, due to this action, the lake is now much safer for recreational use and has resulted in the preservation of a valuable community resource. Please extend our appreciation to the DPW, <coughs> Conservation, Recreation, and any other departments that helped to solve this problem. Uh, in fact, I, I did that on the board's behalf. Uh, Mr. Stewart actually uh, picked the right three departments, uh, DPW, Conservation, and Recreation, and more specifically, the work that Jamie McGaldy did in getting this program going. Um, you will recall that Mr. McGaldy came and made a presentation um, to the board, and we had uh, talked about this, and it just so happens that uh, people who are looking for more information and how this came to be, um, the town topics, this, this uh, issue's town topics actually on the front page, speaks to the milfoil control issue at uh, Silver Lake. And I can tell you, obviously, from the testimony of uh, former Chief Stewart, it uh, seems to be uh, working uh, pretty well. All of this, by the way, was a was, was town originated and it was done um, with uh, town funds. There is a letter from uh, James DePaula, the Middlesex Sheriff, um, just inviting members of the board to attend the 10th Annual Youth Public Safety Academy graduation on Friday, July 31st at 11 a.m. Uh, this is a program that uh, Wilmington youth, among others in Middlesex County, have been involved with. And if you're interested in, uh, in attending, uh, please RSVP as they request uh, to uh, Captain McCarthy of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have a um, standard letter uh, from, in this case, from Comcast regarding any change in service, and they're informing the board about uh, changes in the sports programming that will affect uh, certain of their customers, and they provided that information about the changes to uh, the NFL Network and NBA TV, NHL Network, and uh, ESPN News and other uh, such um, sports-related channels. Um, all of the customers have been provided notices of these uh, changes, and if anybody has any questions about that, they obviously can refer to the letter they've received from Comcast and, uh, and contact Comcast uh, directly. This is all in compliance with uh, their obligation as a provider. Mr. Chairman, the board is being asked to consider the request of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph O'Neill to use the town common and also to conduct a road race walk on behalf of the Justin Andrew O'Neill Scholarship Fund on Sunday, September 13th, 2009. Uh, as you know, this has been happening over the last several years with uh, activities uh, at the common, uh, and uh, the highlight of the event is the, uh, is the race and they have been uh, providing scholarships now for several years to uh, youngsters graduating from Wilmington High School. Uh, they would need your permission to both uh, conduct the road race as well as uh, use the town common on that date. And, and no problems with there the There are no conflicts. Right. Questions, comments, or motion from the board? I make the motion that we grant the license for the Joseph O'Neill Excuse me, Justin O'Neill. I'm sorry, Justin O'Neill. Road race and walk on behalf of uh, for a scholarship fund. <clears throat> Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we we'll also have a request from Thomas Pizera, who is the race director, to conduct Wilmington's fifth annual Happy Birthday Road Race on Sunday, September 27, 2009. And again, they have provided um, assistance to various um, charitable organizations in the uh, in the town over the years, including uh, scholarships to uh, Wilmington students, uh, funding of um, various community fund uh, activities, etc. <coughs> and uh, bring this to your uh, to your attention, um, and hopefully for your approval. And again, no, no scheduling issues. No, sir. Questions, comments, or motion from the board? I'll make the motion that we um, grant Tom Bezerra, the race director, to conduct Wilmington's fifth annual happy birthday road race on Sunday, September 27, 2009. I'll second. Any seconded? Anything further? 
All in favor? Unanimous. And the board is being asked to consider the request of Deborah Cipriani, the recreation director, to use the town common and gazebo for the summer concert series on Wednesday, August 19th, 2009. Uh, as you know, there are concerts there every Wednesday in July, but it just happened that it rained last Wednesday, and they're uh, essentially looking to reschedule uh, and use the, con the, uh, the common um, instead of for last Wednesday for the... Uh, the new date, the rescheduled date of August 19th. The rain out's starting to feel like they might be going in November. <laughs> Do we have uh, questions, comments, or a motion? I assume the 19th of August is no conflict. That's right. Then I would make uh, a motion to grant the request from Deborah Cipriani uh, for the use of the summer concert series on August 19th. I'll second. And second it. Anything further? All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. And Mr. Chairman, we received um, this afternoon a request from Sarah Fowler, who is a resident of Lawrence Street in Wilmington. Um, dear members of the Board of Selectmen, I respectfully ask for permission to get married on the common on the gazebo on Saturday, July 18th at 2 o'clock p.m. The ceremony will be approximately 15 to 20 minutes, and there will be about ten members of their family in attendance. She understands that this is short notice, but appreciates uh, any consideration that you would give. Um, as the board knows, we um, there's nothing a formal schedule for the comment on that day, but uh, when and if the board approves this, a standard letter would go out indicating that the uh, the comment is a, is a public place, and uh, although we'll endeavor to provide uh, the right decorum for any kind of a ceremony, uh, that's uh, something that they certainly will be uh, offered the opportunity to do if they want to hire anybody, but otherwise uh, we make it available if the board allows and there's no other conflicts. Questions, comments, or a motion? I make the motion that uh, we uh, grant Sarah Fowler the uh, ceremony permission to um, use the uh, gazebo in the common um, um, for a summer morning to be married. Second. And seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, that concludes the regular business before the board, Mr. Chairman. Public comments. Seeing none. Uh, new business committee reports. Start down here. I'm getting off the here. I'd just like to want to close out that, um, as we all know, because of budget cuts, uh, the um, Stoneham Zoo and the Franklin Zoo are possibly being closed by the uh, state. Tomorrow is going to be um, another vote, possibly veto it to save it. Um, any concerned citizens, um, you know, that, that um, I request that, you know, they get active tomorrow, make their calls to the legislators. Um, yeah, I'm State House um, pledging support for the zoos. I think uh, it's a mistake. I think uh, most politicians always stress family values, um, unity, and to close zoos that, in fact, you look at the uh, attendance in um, the Herald yesterday, it's been coming up in the last year or two. I think it's a wrong message with sending family values. So I urge, um, along with myself, to at least contact your um, your legislators tomorrow for that vote and, you know, say that you want to support to keep the, um, the zoos um, open, and uh, that's just one part. The other statement I'd like to make that, uh, based on what I just said, it's funny. We're, we're a small government here, and Wilmington's running very efficient, as you can see. We're, we're, we're having a recession just like everybody else. But it's funny that the state and the federal budgets um, are totally not even close to just getting further out, and I just can't imagine, you know, really why. And as far as you as taxpayers, you know, you, you got to pay more attention. I think the, um, this is what it's all about. Every election, even at higher levels, you have to really, it's affecting you and your families and all around your friends and neighbors. Um, as you can see, they always say politicians, the easiest answer as far as I can see is just tax, and then, you know, we give back, but it never gets back. As you can see, uh, at least I can, being self-employed, going around working with families um, that are in need of services, that their incomes are not going up. But your fees 
from the state and federal government are going up. They're actually taking services away, but at the same time, they just think that you can afford these things. I'd like to point out the town of Wilmington, how the residents, where we stand. Each one of these board of selectmen that sit at this table, we take the job serious, uh, present and past. We get paid, I believe, $200 a year. We get no benefits. Town manager is not the highest paid employee of the town. However, you can see that we're putting services forward. There has been no pink slips. We're growing. We're getting fire apparatus, possibly a million dollar fire engine this year, along with other services that are being provided. It works in small government. The five selectmen here with the balance of power, we sometimes don't agree, but sometimes we do. But the balance of power is effective. The town manager, he can tell some of us what he feels, but at the same time, if the power feels that it's the wrong direction, you can see it works right here. The town has grown and, you know, comparable. One of our neighboring towns, you know, had to lay off all the teachers and rehire at lower rates. Wilmington School Committee is, in fact, coming up and it's being supported. It's, in fact, um, I dealt with special needs through the, the, uh, um, the, school, the school, and I was very impressed with the leadership of the schools. Um, in fact, we're coming up on state levels, and, and that's a plus under a recession and hardships. Um, and again, the services, we're, we're going ahead. Um, we just got a new plaza, uh, and we're adding more and more uh, across the street from the plaza. There's more stores that have been coming in. It's not at a fast pace, but it's, it's level. Wilmington is very desirable. Now, it works here. I can't understand why it can't work at state and federal. And again, to get back, we don't have any fire station closings. We don't have any um, layoffs of employees. Police, fire, our municipal. So I think, um, you, you know, pay attention as far as you, you, the taxpayers and voters. It's up to you. You seek your own life. You seek your own path. In years to come, I just hope that you really, instead of who you know, what you think they're going to do for you, do the right thing and look what your long-term investment is. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. That's a tough act to follow. Uh, good stuff. Uh, a couple of things briefly, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to take just a moment to compliment everybody, frankly. I guess all of the, uh, the, the town officials, uh, town employees, the, uh, the law enforcement and safety personnel, and uh, of course, I don't want to slight anyone, but I want to uh, point out the uh, Fourth of July Committee as well as all of the residents who uh, shined, shown, shown. Uh, during the week of 4th of July. Uh, it ended up being a fantastic week with the zip trip and all the events and activities, and I think by and large, everyone had a great time. I know I had a good time, and my family did. Um, and uh, I, again, it was just another successful and wonderful week that illustrates why Wilmington is the greatest place to live. Um, additionally, I want to compliment and thank uh, the uh, I-93 Tri-Town Interchange Project uh, that presented here at Town Hall on uh, June 25th. Um, I was able to, uh, and hopefully many residents were able to go and tour the, uh, the information and presentations that were available. Uh, certainly what I got from it and what was illustrated is that there's much work to be done, uh, but it also illustrated that a lot of work has been going on, and uh, it's exciting to think about the prospect of the future for that region um, and uh, get involved and, and be involved, but uh, I, was very, I was very complimentary of the work that they did to, uh, to illustrate all that at work for us. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I'd like to inquire about the possibility of having or scheduling a representative, I think, uh, a representative from Geosite Incorporated. As you know, Mr. Chairman, we were in receipt of some communication recently uh, from Geosite with regards to the, uh, their feedback on a work plan with regards to the Olin um, mitigation. And uh, I, I may not be use all the right terminologies, but this obviously Olin is a, a buzzword around town, and um, there hasn't it hasn't been discussed, at least openly or uh, um, in in terms of the press. And I haven't really heard much about what's been going on. And we do know that that work has been going on. Um, and so if we could just get some sort of a status update of what's gone on up to date, um, what's uh, where we are with this project, um, I think that would be certainly good for me as a selectman and the rest of the board, but I'm certain that the townspeople would enjoy hearing and, and, and uh, learn from that as well. Yeah, I think uh, the timing is, is right. Let's look in the next uh, 
uh, month or two, August or September, we'll try and get a team in here from uh, Geo Insight and um, other folks who have been involved, and we'll try and uh, give a general update to the board and to the general public. Thank you. And Mike, can you just handle that and let us know sure. by yep. memorandum or otherwise? Well, okay. Uh, important dates. Uh, remind folks again: concert on the common with the Don Campbell Trio is uh, July fifteenth at six thirty. Um, we do have the leaves and brush drop off at Old Main Street, um, the recycling center, set for the fifteenth and the eighteenth. That's Wednesday and Saturday. On the Wednesday, it's from eight a.m. to two p.m. On the Saturday, nine a.m. to four p.m. Again, uh, the following two Wednesdays, the 22nd and the 29th, are concerts in the Common. Uh, August 6th, uh, for those interested, the, the town uh, is Beach Day at Town Beach from 11 to 2 p.m., which is an event sponsored by the Wilmington Police Association in conjunction with the Recreation Department. On August 13th, uh, following up on what was just mentioned by Selectman Shampoo, there is a, another meeting on the uh, 93 development area. Uh, project. The task force will be meeting uh, at the Tewksbury Public Library on that day at 8 a.m. And then the board next meets on August 17th. <clears throat> and at that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing ongoing litigation and the review of executive executive session minutes. Do we have a motion to Not that? To return. Not to return to open session. So Thank moved. you. Second. May be seconded. Any further? All in favor? Aye. Just take a quick roll call vote. Mr. Smiley. Aye. 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 It's four, four yes. Zero no's. I knew you were going to hit yourself. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs>